Welcome to Women's Talk Live. I am your girl, Amy J. I'm Sassy Scribe. And our special guest today is Paris J. And she's actually no stranger to the WPB family because she used to be on WPB Gospel. So I'm going to watch my mouth today. We're going to pray today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to watch my mouth yes, today. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I can be a little bit. I can be a little bit loose with the lips, especially since I've been drinking. <laughs> Right, well, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Now, just before we get into a little of our hot, to hot topics, I see. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us a little bit about you because I know that you just started your own oils and scents and stuff. So, tell us a little bit about that. Now, you have a story behind why you started that. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people don't know. But tell us a little bit about that. Well, as you know, back in October 2016, I had a stroke. And with the stroke, my focus was to recover and be that and the fullest person that I could be. So I started doing um, a series of holistic living. And with my holistic living ministry, I custom create uh, healing health waters. And with the healing health waters, I focus on whatever ailments that your body is faced with at that time, whatever challenges you have. I go in, I custom create a water just for you because the goal is to get people off of medication and to get you back to a restoration point where your body is functioning at its normal, with the way it's supposed to. So I do the healing waters and I do the healing oils and the ministry has been amazing. now expanded as far off to T.D. Jakes being one of my greatest clients. Wow. Um, okay. We're going to go right. to Texas to be there at the Potter's House, nice. so I'll be there this April. Okay. Um, I just got booked to go to uh, Kingdom Women's Chronicles August the 27th, so oh, it's, it's expanding. Thank you. That's great. That's Congratulations. Yeah, I think that's a big thing, um, yes. especially these days and times. I think or getting to more of the homeopathic yeah, solutions natural and medicines. stuff. Yeah. Um, it's so interesting because um, yesterday evening I had a meeting with a young lady and she's into mental fitness okay. and just kind of getting to know you as far as, you know, not so much the physical but the mental. Mm -hmm. She said, you know, when you think differently, you centering your chakras. Right. And let me tell you, she, who she was something, cause she really, she, I took, to this day, I'm like, I'm sitting, I, I came home and I was sitting, I was like, ooh, okay. Hey, you got a lot of stuff. You got a lot of stuff. <laughs> you got a lot of stuff. Sometimes you gotta meditate. I'm taking the 28 day soft love challenge. Mm -hmm. And each day you have to do something different. Well, yesterday was day 12 and we had to unplug. So it was like, I really didn't post a lot, but just to, to step away from social media as I go live right now, but, but to step away from it and then come back to it, you realize that if you can step away from it for six hours or eight hours or 12 hours, then you can do baby steps and, and then 24 hours. This is essential because the key, the key to healing your body, whether it's meditation, whether it's your train of thoughts, whether it's health-wise, it's all about healing your mind. Right. And once you heal your mind, then your mind controls everything else. Mm -hmm. Remember, that's the key function of your mind. Yeah. Yes, it is. So whether your mind is saying, okay, I have an eating disorder, that's how you put on weight. Exactly. If your mind is saying, okay, well, you're not giving me enough to oxygenate and to reprieve, then that's where your depression starts sitting in. So it is, it's about not just meditation, but it's about a whole holistic approach of it. Of, okay, I don't want to deal with ailments and illnesses. I don't want to hurt, I don't want to be down. Right. But once you heal your mind, then everything right. else falls right. in place. And that's what it was about for me to go from having a stroke to not being able to see or walk or talk. And I'm going, wait a minute, these are things that I've had for almost 40 years of my life. I can't die right here. Right. Something, right. Right. Something's got to come from out of this. So that's where I learned about, okay, if I can heal my mind, then my mind is going to tell my body it's time to get exactly. back. Exactly. That's true. Exactly. I have that's so true. much more living to do. Yeah, yes. that's so. true. That's Woo. true. Like I told you, it was eye-opening for me. It really was, and it made me really, really think really about just things that are going on and decisions and just, I, I don't know, it, 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 really, it really was eye-opening. I think it's appropriate because it'll blend right into our hot topics. It really does. <laughs> when it comes yeah. to, you know, mental health. But you got to tell everybody where we are. We're live today mm -hmm. at Montego, uh, was it Montego Barn Grill at 1818 North Charles Street. 
downtown Baltimore, so we want to come yeah, yeah, it's a new establishment. Yep. Um, you guys are like it. It's um, it was an Afro Caribbean fair. Yeah. 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 And they have the libation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And it's black owned, like I said. Yes. Um, yes. It is a black owned. Yeah, They've been here about seven months. Yes, yeah, seven yeah. months. Right. Um, yeah. Charles Street, from where yeah. we are in downtown Baltimore. Um, you see a lot of things going on. I see a lot, when I came here, I see a lot of gentrification going on right here. Really a lot of it, it a lot of it. it. And it's, y'all better wake up and start buying these properties and when you buy them, hold on to them and keep them up. That's you know right. Because it's a shame how so exactly. many things right. are going away. Right. I mean, the gas fees is across the street. Y'all remember the gas fees? Yeah, it used to be choices. Odell's, choices, yeah. Odell's. <laughs> <The> volcanoes, <laughs> volcanoes up the street. I remember, no, no, no. Yeah, I, I remember we got into a fight on the parking lot in Volcanoes, and that's a long story. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all. So uh, we're going to take a real, real quick break. But when we come back, we're going to get into our hot topics. Oh, my God. Because there's a lot, a lot that went on. A lot. Even in the past 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, a lot. So we're going to where we got more weeks <laughs> up live coming up next. And welcome back to Women's Talk Live. I am Mabel J. I'm Sassy Scribe. And join us today is the lovely Paris. Paris J. Paris J. Alright, so Mabel J. Paris J. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so our first hot topic, mm -hmm. before we get into the ones that like was uh, like that happened in the last 24 hours. But the first one I want to kind of just kind of get into a little bit too quickly. Uh, oh, we okay. got to do it twice, but we just have too many hot topics in the next day. Just like that. <laughs> so, but uh, Representative Omar, and she is Ooh. newly appointed to the House of Representatives. She's one of our, uh, one of the congressmen, uh, congresswoman, and um, she's young. She's an immigrant, and she came here, and, and she's Muslim. And she's Muslim. And she's Muslim. And she made a comment on Twitter stating that, you know, basically a lot of the laws, a lot of the lobbying and everything <coughs> is controlled by Jewish money. Facts. <laughs> okay. No lies told. Now see, somebody got into, I got into it with somebody because they were like, well, that's, and, okay, that's fine. If that's the way you want to see it, that's fine. Mm -hmm. In my view, and if anybody that knows me, I love Bill Barr, I watch him faithfully every Every, every Friday. Every Friday. And he will be here soon. Exactly. He will be here and June. I will be front June 9th. Um, He'll be here. I'll be front <laughs> So, but he, you know, he made a comment like, she was not lying. And he was saying like, if I say something against Saudi Arabia, does that mean that I'm anti-Saudi anti Arabian or whatever? Like, it, I don't think she meant it in that context. I think she meant it to say, yes, a lot of stuff that go on is controlled by money. white money, Jewish right. money, mafia money, money. whoever <laughs> money. Money. Okay. Money. It's not just the Koch brothers. It's not. It's not just the Koch brothers. It's, it's the Myers family. The, Myers the family. Waltons are in it as well. You got Bezos throwing his money right. around. You got the, the Starbucks guy. Everybody got their hand in the pot in some way, shape, or form. Right. The blue laws are based off the fact that the Jewish women could not shop on Sunday which is why our malls are open. Right. So they got to do their research. And I worked at a synagogue and learned a lot of ins and outs on, on things. So, oh, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I, I worked for them for years. Um, the Orthodox Jews, and don't get me wrong, they're, they're very, they've always been generous and honest, mm -hmm. but they are very strict with how they believe. And like, I think it was one time I worked for an attorney, he said once a year they had to pledge and they had all year long to pay for it. To pay for it. Yes. So yes. I always said when I worked at the synagogue that the black church should model how they raise money mm -hmm. and go. how they do things. Mm -hmm. They would have a during Passover. They had a right. wine sale, right. and I would laugh. I was like, you could not get a black church. Y'all know I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> you could not get a black church to this day, and I haven't worked right. for them for over ten years. Yeah. But to this day, you could not get them to do a wine sale during the week of Easter. Yeah. Because oh, you can't be selling liquor because people trying to get drunk. These people made ten, twenty, thirty thousand right. dollars right. selling wine, and, right. and it was a they, fundraiser. They, they drink wine they come out for me. But but they but they didn't look at it like That's you're selling. It. They're looking at it as a fundraiser to keep their offices and their lives. They're looking exactly. at it in a different 
in a different life. But they quit that to do a fish fry. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have to look at how structured the Jewish community is. Yes, it is. Yes, as, it is. As, as, as we as black people mimic that, Oh my God. Oh my God. I mean, they, the way in which they, they, they had dues. Like, we pay in tithes, they have right. dues. You can't even, right. you can't even join the synagogue. Right. Right. You right. can't even join the synagogue right. without paying a, an annual due. And, and we got dues. financial aid right. if you can't afford it. Exactly. And everybody signs on to the building. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't care who you are. Everybody. 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 We had a Jewish right. uh, um, commentator one time, and he pointed out a valid point to me. He said, Paris, think about it like this. When you look at the Jewish communities, let's take Park Heights for a prime example, mm -hmm. they take care of their own. Yes, they do. You don't see Jewish homeless people. You don't, no. you don't see them in the line of the social mm -hmm. services. You don't mm -hmm. do that. They structure their communities uh, to survive. Everything right. to they survive. They invest exactly. for their children. Yeah. And that is why they have wealth. It's right. not about being rich. Right. It's about having wealth. Exactly. And we as black people invested in our children now where they go. Where they do it? Yeah. Oh my God. It would be crazy. We could do it. And right. in another community, Asian community, you don't see You see a lot of different communities all helping each other right. except for us. Except for us. Yes. Except for us. Right. We're so we're afraid that somebody is going to take, take it. And and oh my God. We're going to take it. Instead of understanding it. what your own individual yeah. gift is. If you knew what your gift was, and we right. put all our gifts together, girl. <laughs> And it's the, and to me, I don't understand, I do not understand in the black community, and it irks me to all get out. Why in the world are we carrying this jealousy? Oh, they doing this, or oh, they stole this from me, or oh, they did this, like, come entitlement. on. And so, entitlement, like, what, like, what my thing is, why can't we, exactly. why can't we just work and you, support each other? I don't care what this one or that one does. Like, case in point. You do situation with Sassy. Yep. I hands down support that. I will listen to it. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with because my thing is is it shouldn't be about competition. It should be about supporting. Regardless of what that is. Supporting. But we have a hard time. And we, I, have a hard time. we really have a hard time doing that. And then the, the hot topic that we're gonna talk about, we're actually gonna see how when things start to come out, we saw it with um Kamala Harris, the minute that she yeah. started saying that she wanted to be president right. of the United States, well, I'm not supporting her because yeah. she locked up brothers. Well, right. did they do something wrong? I mean, everybody, she, okay, we're going to talk about that she one guy. Her job. But it was one guy yeah. that she locked up, and it could be more than one, I don't know, but it's the only the one that I saw on social media that people were talking about. Okay. And how she just, she, she dropped the ball, she got it wrong. She corrected that when she could. Okay, but the fact remains that she was a prosecutor. Prosecutors prosecute people. Right. So if you weren't doing something wrong, she would have no reason to prosecute you. Yeah. And then that's what pissed me off about that. And then they went to Cory Booker. Yeah. Cory Booker ain't going to win because Cory Booker's not married. And black women, which 98% of us vote in our community, we're looking at the fact that this man isn't married. So what I'm not saying is right, right. but I know how we're thinking. Because Barack wouldn't have got uh, elected, I don't think, if he had been married to a white woman. The fact that the fact that he had a strong sister behind him, like a, a true Chicago Southside sister, if you read her book, <laughs> if you read her book, yeah, she, she, she was from the streets. She, she was. Her family she was, was from the streets. Right, so yeah. I'm thinking that with, this is how we're looking at it. You don't see any, especially black men. You don't see them vetting Biden. Bernie Sanders, Beto O'Rourke, right. Julian Castro. You don't see the, the Hispanic community talking about Julian Castro right. the way the black community is talking about Kamala Harris and, and Cory Booker. Right. And you it's pissing me off. I, I, I said I wouldn't vote for her. Mm -hmm. I said I wouldn't vote for her because I don't see her in the strength. I don't, okay. think, I don't think she, okay, maybe, maybe it was not so controversial between her and 45. Mm -hmm. I think right now her point is to prove him wrong. But I'm like, what? What else is on your agenda? What can you? What are you going to offer the United States? Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to hear from her. And that's not what I'm getting. So for me right now, I'm like, you got to wheel me in because right now I'm on. And, and but see, and that is that is a valid, reasonable that's point. Exactly. But just to say well, she like brothers up, yeah. so yeah. I'm not going to vote for me. She was a prosecutor. Right. And prosecutors, right. she did her job. Right. people right. up. And so I, she think, did I her think that's our problem. We don't research. We don't research. We don't, right. we don't sit and try to really think about or. Or even put them to the fire and say, hey, listen, like, what are you going to exactly. do? Exactly. Right. Exactly. But she said what she was going to do. 
She said it, and people even said, and, and, and it's very extreme, it's very far it left. Is. And I'm extremely liberal, but I'm with that whole legalizing sense. marijuana thing. Absolutely. I'm with that whole the free combat. I'm I'm, for it. And I'm with I'm, <laughs> it. <laughs> and I'm also with her for the um the the the, the, the medicines. Because the, right. the and, and if you look at it, the doctors are the ones telling you you need this process, right. and the insurance companies are the ones saying right. no. Exactly. And that's what we need to take out of it. Right. So I get that. Her her mindset on that went a little too far mm -hmm. because the pharmace pharmaceutical lobbyists are not gonna yeah, have it. Right. But right. you know, I, I understood what she was saying because I sold insurance for twenty years. Right. So I get what she's saying about that. Exactly. Yeah. Alright, so just kind of get into a little bit because we want to get into a little Ooh, bit. We're <laughs> <laughs> getting into a little bit that we want to get into the um situ there's a situation in Wisconsin with uh, Colin Kaepernick. And apparently the uh, it was the um, for Black History Month. Oh, you had a resolution that was from the state legislature. State legislature. Legislators. I wasn't smoking. I'm sorry. Oh, but I know Black Caucus. But they gave names of who they wanted to honor for Black History, and he was on there. So you had the GOP Republican and may I say white Republicans who said, oh no, we're not going to even bring it to the floor until you remove his name. Well, and in the end, he got $80 million from the NFL. So. He did. When? But, but the fact is, they wouldn't even do it. Like, at some point, what are we going to say? You can't tell us who we can and cannot order. Right. When, we, when we say that. Yeah. When we say that, when and we, then, we, we don't push even, back. And then when they asked him about it, now mind you, when they asked him about it, because one of the one of the representatives, when they asked him, he uh, he just said that you know if they did it for obvious reasons because he was too controversy and all this stuff. Our so whole now, country is controversial. Right, now, <laughs> the name of the and he's a majority leader. His name is Jim Standing. Okay. From Wisconsin. From oh, Wisconsin. But you know right now, the, but, the, that's but, one of the states that's going to decide. But here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. Now, now mind you, Kevin didn't do nothing but kneel and support things that were going on in the black community. This person, who is head of the GOP down there, he was arrested 20 years ago, charged with criminal trespassing and drug driving. Okay? But that was just, you know, misspent you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we gotta give him a break. <laughs> you know, we gotta give him a break. But yet, yet, Kaepernick was too controversial. The, I, I'm gonna blame that right there. I'm gonna blame that on the black legislatures in that, yeah, in that, I, in that state and that's for not point. pushing back. That's the point. Yeah. We, instead of sitting down and saying, oh, okay, and they replaced it. I'm not replacing it. That's what I'm not did. replacing it. That's what angered me. They replaced his name with a couple of other senators or whatever. And I said, that's the problem. That's why they think they can do things right. and get away with it because they figure we're not gonna fight that. Well, you know what really, and then what really pisses me off in the black community is we are so forgiving. I'm sorry. I ain't that much of a forgiving person. Okay. I'm not. I can take it to the grave. Yeah. I mean, I can take it to the grave if you if you really let me carry it that way. But I can't let you rent, live rent free in my head. But as a community, we're always you shot and killed my son, and I'm gonna get on TV and say, but I forgive. No, I'm not gonna forgive you. And that's what they were mad about. Trayvon Martin's father recently. It's been seven years since he passed, and they had um, a march in Florida, and they had a banquet for him. I found his, right. the, the Trayvon Martin Foundation. And when he got up and he stood up, a lot of people were really angry because he said, no, I don't forgive George Zimmerman. He has the right he does have not, not to right. forgive this man. Right. I would never forgive him. I would die not forgiving him. I hate to say it like that. He's but not he, even sorry. He's not. He's not. not even and he's, he's and my son, no. his whole life is cut short. And I'm supposed to forgive you because it's the Christian thing to do? I'm not doing it. Oh, not doing amen. It. Let's talk about <laughs> that. Wait, that's <laughs> why we got, we got the pass on board. to use Christianity. Yes, I'm a pastor. Yes. I'm going to say it. People try to use Christianity for their own benefit. Yes, no, no, tell it what it is. <laughs> tell it what it is. Because him forgiving George Zimmerman, that's not for the community. That's, that's not good. Because the community right. can't give him back his son. No. Right. Right. It can't take back everything that their family has gone through. That's between him and his Lord. See? Screw George Zimmerman. <laughs> his forgiveness. Exactly. He's right. not humble. He's not remorseful. And he's like this. 
if I can do it again, I would. Right. And that's exactly because what people I are allowing it to happen. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. No, true. don't break Christianity no, in that. No, no. What? That's All called right. common sense. Yeah. So got listen, the pass fall up, I know. <laughs> <laughs> right, so before we get into before we get into our, um, our next segment, um, I'm real quick because this has just been an ongoing thing that's been going on. But Jesse Smollett. That child died. <laughs> God bless his heart. He's my grandpa. You know what? Say, I'm just no, but you know what? I was and, and and I was getting into it with people in my in my my threads on social media. I really wanted to believe. I did too. This boy. I really did. But when my nephew was like, Auntie, yeah. <laughs> you don't get hit with a gun and get that yeah, thirteen. No, you don't. Auntie. No, you don't. You don't. You go crack some bones. And that's what he said. Yeah. No, no, and no, it no. just made me. No, no. It just really. It pissed me off that. I think, and, and this is just my opinions, that, and not the opinions of, of women talk about this, this is my personal opinion. With everything that's going on in this country, right. the divisiveness that's going on, with the Me Too movement that's going on, he set the whole system back. Whereas they're not gonna believe black people, they're not gonna believe gay people, they're not gonna believe anybody when it comes to assault. Right. And all this was for what? For what? I, I, and that, that's what baffles me. I don't understand. Because the fact that you are sitting here and you are accusing white people, white people. White, two white people in the middle of Chicago, 40 below um, weather, with Make America Great Ads. No camera footage, but there's cameras everywhere. I, I mean, it was it was a lot. I was like, okay, I'm gonna try to get this guy a little further down, but it was just too go. many holes. Right. And then at the end, when you know, we find out, like, if, even when they arrested the two guys, I was, like, confused. I was like, okay, I thought they were white. Right. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. We're going to come, come back to this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, so, <laughs> when we come back, we got more Women's Talk Live. We're coming up on debate about this. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, but just to kind of get a little bit before we get into our, uh, our subject matter of the show, you said something about he being on the run. Yes, they, they just popped up on my timeline that he is currently left Chicago. Now, whether or not he left the entire state or just the, the country or just the state, but he's now on the run because the Chicago police are not looking for him. Because he has, they have questions. Right, right. They have questions that he needs to answer. And I think, like you said, that this started and it just started to snowball and it got out of control yeah. because it went, it went viral, it went national, it went international. Right. And now you got World Star Media Takeout, TMZ. Right. You got all of the major networks, even the you know the mainstream media, MSN, MSNBC. Right. You got all of those networks right. talking about it. Right. He went on Good Morning America and sat in Robin Roberts' face yeah, and like, did oh the most God. Academy Award yes, winning yes, he did. acting yes, he ever. Did. Yes, he did. I mean, yes. but he's a, but he just right. showed his chops on that he did. because he did very very well. But right, it how much you did all of this? $4,000. No, he did this and uh, that's all he paid for. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. $4,000. And your entire career, life, career is shot. Everything is, is gone. gone. It's gone. For $4,000. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. For what? And I think people like that because I was saying on, on different threads on social media that it's a mental deficiency that he has. Mm -hmm. Just to sit down. I'm a writer. And I can think about a lot of different things that I could write about. And, and, and one of my books, my cousin looked at me and she was like, you ain't right, There's something wrong with you. You know what I mean? Just from, from what I wrote. But to sit down and think, now let me see, let me get these two dudes. Right. Let me hire them. I want y'all to beat me up. Then I'm going to tell the police that they did it. And then we're going to see what I mean, how do you plot that out? And then what's the purpose? You know what? That's why I said it's a lot. It's a lot of mental ill. Life and art. And, and yes, and you have a lot of these people with these mental illnesses walking around and functioning well let me say this they're functioning mental illness because they're right. walking around they're in your job like I see so much on a daily basis where I'm like do we have like three mass shootings this past week yes we for did. workplace we did. shooting we did workplace shooting so yeah. people, you're working side by side with people that are having you these, just don't these mental illnesses yeah. and you, you don't, don't know. But we needed the wall. We needed the wall, y'all. Because the, wall. the wall. Mexicans are gonna come over here and yeah. take your jobs right. and they're gonna rape your precious little blonde women. Right. And then they're gonna impregnate them and then right. they're gonna bring MS 13 
which is yeah. already here, <laughs> <laughs> to do everything that's to already done. To do everything that's already, already done. Yeah. Gotcha. Not to mention with those uh, tunnels that El Chaco built with um, air conditioning oh, and so electricity. Oh, and you know, like, he was, this man was serious. You know, the I'm never going to stop drugs. Yeah. You know why they never going to stop drugs? There's too much money in drugs. It is. And it's never going to get it stopped. And they're going to kill everybody. They're going to kill everybody. They're not even going to be able to legalize it because there's too much money in it. And those cartels are not going to let you legalize it. They're not. They may let you legalize marijuana, but cocaine and heroin, y'all better think about it. I don't want my name on the bill, so they can look for me. <laughs> but I'm like, this. Why, why do we even need it legalized, especially here in Maryland? Because all you got to do is drive down on East North Avenue at the bottom of the hill. They're giving it away for free. But they're trying yeah. to get them off of drugs, though. Keep that in mind. I got I'm sorry. By I'm giving them methadone. I represent by myself right now today. By giving them right methadone. Right method method <laughs> so they're giving them one drug to get yeah. them off another yeah. drug. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 oh, but all the same effects. Right, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't understand. All right, so let's try Twitter facts. Okay. All right. So, all right. What you want to bring us in about Twitter facts? Oh my God. Real quick. I don't know. I can't see without my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so you put it free. I'll chime in. I have my glasses. Right. So you have to get the cue cards made in a font 15 minutes. <laughs> Well, thank you, Mr. Producer, for putting these together. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Appreciate but it. my glasses make me look old. <laughs> no, I can't have that. All right. <laughs> okay, so currently there are 101 HBCUs in existence. Oh, yeah. Yep. Four of those are here in Maryland, which is Baltimore, Coppin, Morgan State, and Bowie State, which my daughter goes to, and University of Maryland. East of Shore. Five have closed their doors permanently in 18, I mean in 1989. Several wow. others, such as Knoxville College, Morris Brown, with only 55 enrolled, stay open in name only as they have lost their accreditation due to under enrollment in debt. Wow, that's so sad. And simple. here's one that we that um just did the benefit we just did a, the, the mm -hmm. fundraising for, which was Bennett College. Mm -hmm. They needed five million dollars to actually keep their doors open, and they actually ended up raising yeah. over eight million. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, it, it was good that we were able to yeah. raise, or that you know, we as a community and mm -hmm. a lot of us was able to keep that because yeah. that was the uh, oldest uh, female. Yes, the AKAs came out really, really strong in they DC. Did. They did. They came out really, really strong in DC. That's phenomenal. Oh, okay. You said Jesse's brother. Yeah, the the brothers also oh, like yeah, a million did, dollars. They did, they did donate a million. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but, all right. Um, so you know, so as as you know, as we go into this, you know, I, I think that we should support our HBCUs. I mean, at one time we had over 130 HBCUs. So the fact that we're down to 101. Is that because the alumni aren't supporting them the way which they should? I think we just don't support it. Yeah. We just don't. Um, and I think that we really, really should. We're so All focused you on HU, these, HU people. Right, we're so focused on these big universities. Not saying there's not anything wrong with the big universities, it's fine, but I think that we should really consider HBCUs and, you know, when my daughter decided she wanted to go to HBCU, I was just like, I was like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I wasn't mad at that. Um, but in our community, and not just in our community, my, my favorite talk show host always talks about the, how anything black is always underestimated, undervalued, and marginalized. Mm -hmm. And you can get the same degree, but because it says Bowie or Hampton or, or Bethune Cookman yeah. or Tuskegee, right. because it says that, Right. They don't think it means or has the same merit right. as, you know, University of Maryland right. College Park, right. you know, or George Washington or, or George Mason or anything like that. So you have to look at that. You have to instill in them that value. I'm happy that she went. The majority of the ones yeah. I know, they don't even want right to right right. go to. I think every yeah. black child, and I'm really mad that I didn't do it when I was young, but I'm, every black child needs the... The, a different world, Hillman College. Yeah, you need no, that experience. Yeah, you yeah, need yeah, that experience yeah. on campus. And, 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 really and you can, like, like I said, like right now she's carrying a 4.0 average. She's but she was always on the brand. She is. But April's I mean, door is not addition for my real child. But I mean, but <laughs> still, <laughs> in the key. Yeah, I yeah. mean, she's not the key. She is pushing mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. Our parents don't push our that kids the way that they used to when we were growing up. We're in a totally different era. It's more so like. Do whatever you want to do. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I tell her, 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 I
said, you know, yeah, you know, <laughs> you need to be in school. Yeah. college, I'm sorry, it ain't gonna happen. I went, you go. That's right. The hustle is right. real. Yeah, like, go. Okay, it's cool to, with the rap artists and all of them, mm-hmm. but eventually. But you're not gonna be a rap artist. Right. No. And you, and, and you and see you it, play basketball and you see it, you see it on these um, reality shows, like, yo, you 50. Let's pull it back some. Right. Let's pull it back and do something different. You know, Maybe you should drive a truck. <laughs> or go to the post office or get a good government job. You know what I'm saying? But you know, 50 years, but, but then, what's her name? Kathy Bates didn't become a movie star until she was 40. That's right. Morgan Freeman didn't make it big until he was 50. So I've always people, been 50. Huh? Hasn't he always been 50? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's not. He's just not going to do that. But the, but the thing with it is that some people, yes, they can get a big break later on in life, right, you know, right. or in that afternoon of life. But, you know, it's, it's like a very, very, very small percentage of individuals right, right, right. who are going to make it to the NBA or the Major League Baseball or the NFL. Right. You know, it's a very, very small percentage. But look at who, look at, in the black community, look at who and what our role models are. So our kids are looking at the basketball stars, they're looking at the rap artists, they're looking at the Beyonce's and stuff. And this is what our kids are trying to mimic mm-hmm. versus seeing what we saw in our era of watching the Cosby Show or a different world and having that instilled mm-hmm. in us. So I tell my daughter all the time, I'm your role model. You better it, watch it that that I do. Now I will say this, exactly. I will say this, and we just had the Grammys mm-hmm. and Cardi B. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to say this because I think I posted it and I got a lot of flat mm-hmm. on it. But Cardi B is the only one that took that ratchet platform mm-hmm. and used it for what you were supposed to use it for. Right. What all the other people on every show, every last one of them, are trying to do what Cardi did. And Cardi did it by being Cardi B. She cursed, she, she was nasty, she I said what she wanted you. to say, right. exactly. and she took it then. She took it. Pepsi is endorsing her. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And this girl went from the pole yeah. to the grand. Right. Right. And she ran it. Then what got me off was after she went and ran to the bottom. Yes, she did. No, you got your victory, but, baby. But, but, be, but because of who she is, you gotta remember who she is. You ain't gonna come for me without saying something. Yeah. You know what you she like she had you. Sure that's 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 but, but but that's always been her class. That's that's who she is. Yeah, that's who, that's she, who is. she is. But, yeah. but she had to have somebody say, no, let's bring this one back. Let's just look. I know you right. I know you mad. Let's take it off of social media. Right. Cuss me out, rant at me, say what you wanna say. You know, you know you're at work and you write those emails. Didn't I just tell you? But then you gotta erase that yeah. and say, per my last email. But you know what I'm saying? Say, when they go low, you go yeah. high. Yeah, I can't go high though. But you know, Sometimes I, I gotta go low. But you know, I realized a long time ago, you can't tell everybody, especially grown people, if they want to get on social media right. and, and talk all kinds of dirt and talk all kinds of rants and talk on at, at some point, you be like, listen, that's who they are. You don't know what happened. But, but yeah, you know, so I gotta I try say this because it's funny. You <laughs> just made me think of something today when you were saying at some point you gotta grow old and mature from the rap name. You do because uh, I don't know if you heard about uh, Big Daddy Kane coming to Baltimore in a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, I was dying laughing going to church. Like, what's he going there? But you gotta <laughs> see. But you know what? <laughs> and the big one, I like Big Daddy Kane. Like 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 <laughs> like I'm gonna tell you, I went to the old school hip hop show. Uh, big Daddy Kane was the best. Yeah, I mean, because he, he, he was still, he was still dancing and he was still flipping. Uh, it was all of the other ones who you could tell. Well, it's probably time for him to retire. <laughs> because there's too many of us still over there. Still, right. We want to hear. We want to hear Big Daddy King. Yeah. We want to hear Star Cup Moe's hurting. I ain't got no Big Daddy King. Let me tell you, let me tell you <laughs> when DMX came out, I was the first one. Like, I would be at the first show when he come to Well, I like DMX. <laughs> I love DMX. I like DMX. And the last time I saw DMX, he was high in Cooter Brown. Oh, let me tell you. Last time I saw DMX, he was throwing a cereal ball across his across the, uh, the room at his manager. But anyway, so, <laughs> I hope he's got in the health baby. I do, I do, I hope so, I hope so. I but listen, um, uh, we're gonna take a really short, short break and then we come back, we're gonna get into our segment. We wanna thank the owner of Montego Grill and Bar. Bar and Grill. Bar and Grill. Bar and Grill, I'm sorry. <laughs> 1818 North Charles Street, Baltimore. All right, so thank you again. And listen, come support your black businesses okay that we just talked about the hbcus that we need to support we need to support our black businesses mm-hmm. so make sure you come out the food is excellent i had i had the red snap don't talk about it I'm on <laughs> okay I just, I just got the side eye the red snapper <laughs> they make red snapper here red snapper it was 
awesome. What did they put there? I'm gonna talk to them because I wonder what they put in she, it. Okay. <laughs> 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 I know. You said you talking about my hungry. It was awesome. She just, she just talking about you. I know. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Like a minute. Back to when it's live. We just is crazy though. All right. So listen, we're gonna get into our um, our main topic that was for today. I mean, it's been something that's also been trending in social media. Social media. But, but you know, it started like really like three weeks on social media. Yeah. But a lot of people weren't really picking it up. A lot of people right. weren't really paying attention they to it. Were. Slowly but surely, right. it built Until up. Until it got on the Today Show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was in a lot of different groups, and they were talking about it, but it, it wasn't until right. the Washington Post picked it up. Post. Huffington Post, I'm Huffington sorry. Post. The Huffington Post right. picked it up, and then it went to Washington Post, and then it kind of snowballed from there. But right. we right. want to talk about it. Yeah, so <laughs> what we're talking about is... Um, Dan Gatsby, who's the husband of um, lifestyle brand B, B. B. Smith, mm -hmm. um, she was known for her style. I think her the Black Martha Stewart. Yeah, the Black she was Martha, Black Martha she was, Stewart. She, she did a lot of DIY tablescapes, right. recipes. Right. right. Her and restaurant in DC was amazing. Right. I think back in 2016, she was diagnosed with uh, Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. and um, I think it was she was on. I remember her being one time. She was on the Today Show, and she was doing like a recipe and I think it was something that she just she couldn't remember and she it, it was kind of like everybody was kind of like and then the one of the ladies tried to help her and said she was just like no and then so and then after that that's when they realized that you know, oh, okay. she suffered okay. from this but <clears throat> um, for a long time you know nobody has seen nobody her. seen her and, and nobody knew about it right so um, and I watched the interview that uh, he did with our girl on the Today Show mm -hmm. And I guess one of the young ladies, I guess she was a nurse that was coming in and helping out with um, the care mm -hmm. of her. And he was saying how, you know, a lot of her care was, you know, it, it was like her being a child. Yeah. So um, I guess this lady came in, she came in as support, they became friends, and then ultimately they became involved. Bed wench. <clears throat> My thing is this, because I had, unfortunately, I had an uncle that, that passed away from that. And I know that it got to be overwhelming for my aunt, um, to the point that he was eventually moved to um, Bayview and then to another facility. So I know that it can be overwhelming. But I don't know what conversation that him and B had as she started to go through this. If you look, if you find love, then you know you do what you need to do. I think that he could have had this relationship, not that I agree with it, but he didn't have to bring the woman into the house. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying he not to get your love. Public. He didn't. Well, yeah. it was going to be public because it's yeah. B. Smith, and somebody now, was going to say something. Now, here, here's here's one thing. Now he says in the interview that she told him to go ahead and bring it public. And I'm thinking about. I don't myself. believe it. She couldn't I'm remember a recipe. I'm thinking about myself. She, she got can't. Alzheimer's. Does he know? I mean, where he? Did she remember the conversation, or did she like? I, no, uh-uh. And then, I, and then I, here's the thing I think, because Bravo just greenlit a reality I series. Heard about that. They just got this reality series with Bravo. Mm -hmm. So I got issues now with Andy and his team. Yeah. Because why would you want to put a spotlight on this? Yeah. Well, I, mean, that's I don't see if anybody has ever seen anybody with Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and what it does to them. You don't want to see a reality show of this. You don't. Not only that, but about her integrity and respect. Yes, his exactly. Life. Yes. You make you make real boss husband decisions. You yes, do that. Right. You don't. You don't. Where's her family? Why is her family? I don't think she has any family because right. they've only interviewed her stepdaughter. Stepdaughter. No. Who yeah. sees yeah. nothing I wrong? I don't think he. I don't think her legal team. team. I don't think. Yeah. Where's her team? Where's her, team? Where's her manager? Her yeah. agent? Her PR people? Right. Because, because she had right. that before. Right. She, did. she had all she that. Did. She did. Now, he's saying, which I completely do not agree with, but he's saying that if this lady, who he's supposed to be nurse slash girlfriend, whatever, was black, it wouldn't be so much of a backlash. No. In my opinion, I would have more of a problem if she was black. Because I'm like, come on, really? You're going to do this to another black woman? 
I, it doesn't matter. The fact that she is living in the household with the wife, right? I have an issue. Now listen, regardless, I, I don't tell them, listen, to each his own, they do whatever you, that's your business, okay? But when you bring it public to the point where this woman, and I mean, she, like I said, like we said, she was the black mother store. Like she had a real business, thriving business. She had so, a very viable, she had, yes. a, she had a B. Smith line in Bed Bath & Beyond. Right. Right. She had her restaurants, she, she had her cookbooks, and she had her lifestyle on uh, books and right. magazines. So she was 100% right. cognizant of right. what she was so doing in her, in her career. Like this is, Bravo know. put it like this. Bravo Network has recently reportedly greenlit a reality show featuring B. Smith's husband, Dan Gadsby, who is involved in an adulterous relationship with his mistress, Alex Lerner. The good news, this is how they put it, the good news is, Bravo's camera crew will be in the house every day monitoring B. Smith. A camera crew is not a medical, they're not medical doctors. They're monitoring, and they're monitoring what it is you guys are doing. That's what it is. That's, that's, that's exact. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's that BS. I don't want to say that word, but. It is. It is. It is both. It is, it is both. And he, she never gave him permission. Right. I question no. her legal team at this point because, first of all, when she was first diagnosed with Alzheimer's, something should have been put into place. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Because Some type of living will, right. a living will should have been put right. into place right. for that. And see, the problem is, if he gets cut at this point, then what? He can't, well, he can't get cut. Did they get married in Maryland or, or D.C.? Because in Maryland, if they've been together long enough, he's going to get half anyway. Maryland, too. Maryland has, is a common law. No, no, I'm saying it's a, a, common, uh, a, a common state, right? Common but, law. Common law? This is common law. Okay, okay common law. so D.C., what is D.C.? So did they get married in D.C.? Did they get married in Virginia? Or did Wait they get minute. married in Maryland? Wait a minute. It doesn't matter at this point because it's openly, what? Adultery. Adultery. Uh, yeah. Which would solidify everything. Yeah, we're the okay. boys. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. At this point, point, they can right. step in and 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 see the system. Yeah, they could. They, they really could, could because her estate would allow that to happen. Right. Right. Oh, oh see, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I wasn't feeling. I wasn't feeling I'm what right. I said. Yeah. I had issues. I did too. With it from the beginning, I don't really. I don't right. like it. Yeah. And as we were saying off air. How does a man, and I know men, y'all get in women's ear and the little pillow talking stuff, mm -hmm. and you can convince us to do some of the dumbest stuff. <laughs> I mean, really, we, they really can. But how do you really have this conversation? As a right. woman, I'm like, I'm not even feeling right. right. As a woman, right. coming in your house every day, knowing I'm laying up, and my mother would say, running your man. Right. <laughs> like, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Like that, you know what? That is a question. Because if they together, obviously he ain't sleeping with his wife. No. Right. So, so you're there? okay. Your wife is sleeping in another room, and you in another room with this, with with this woman. Woman. I, that's my opinion. So, but I'm just saying, like, really? And <laughs> so she you was, know, at this point, anyone could step in and say yeah. that this is um, elderly endangerment at this point. Ooh. See, when he went on the view. See, yeah, I saw the women I, I snapped up. Right, I and saw the view interview. In. I didn't see the Al Roker yeah, interview. Yeah, I didn't see I the saw view. view yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah. Anybody because they really him. weren't yeah. feeling him. No. Right. They really weren't feeling him with the questions that they were asking him. And he was really trying to justify why he was doing what he's doing. Like, I'm not, and they weren't saying, don't move on with your life. You don't have to be so public, to be public with it. Or in the house. Or in the house with it. That's crazy. You know, you want to move on. I'm going to say that. And leave. Well, to do the right thing. Then we're Because you can't justify nothing have, that you're saying. Or listen. Me. Or have your B I C T H on the <laughs> side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you call them side pieces. Side. Have the side piece. Right. They're side for a reason. So, so that's not. What, so, why didn't anyone ask him why don't you just divorce him? Because he can't say that he's in it for love. Because love would not allow him. But you know what those statistics are? Because I, when I heard this and I looked this up, the statistics are like 33% of men will leave their wife in the event of, an, in, uh, of, of a debilitating disease. So it could be cancer, mm -hmm. it could be something like Alzheimer's, it could be as something as them having to wear a colostomy bag, even if it's only for a very short period of time, where it's only like 11%, and I think it's even less than that, maybe, I think maybe 7 or 8% of women. Here it says 
a married woman diagnosed with a serious disease is six times more likely to yep. be divorced or separated than a man with a similar diagnosis. Men are selfish. They are. As They're studies selfish. show that the divorce said, rate was 21% for women versus 3% for, for men. men. Yep. So, so I mean, you get this disease and they just up in the yeah. air. See what they need to do is just come and be for the holistic healing and go ahead and do one more thing and get better. There you go. Because nine times out of ten, he's the reason why. <laughs> And then get a vaginal steam. <laughs> then get a yoga steam. Vaginal steam is work, ladies. I hate to do two of them. Yes, you gotta do it. They are also Then get yourself a yoni egg or one. Oh. Serenity Wellness. Serenity Wellness. Let me tell you. Serenity Wellness. That's one of my favorite places. Yes. Serenity Wellness. Serenity Wellness. All right, y'all. So when we come back, we're going to get into the alternative families because um, it's interesting because right now with the state of how the economy is, the way people are viewing their finances these days, they're opting to do alternatives. Alternative. Alternative. Living. Alternative lifestyles. forms of living. Exactly. All right, so uh, don't go anywhere. We got more Women's Talk Live. Welcome back to Women's Talk Live. Our off air conversations are interesting. <laughs> I think they're very enlightening. But we're going to talk about our next um, segment is the alternative okay. families. Days of the traditional family is not so much the norm. Families now either financially decide to stay together, consisting of same-sex households, or becoming rotating parent households. With the changes in culture and even the uncertainty of the economy, folks are making choices to best suit best their families. Now, um, I know that for me, I just kind of say, hey, listen, whatever works for you, works for you. Right. I respect it. I don't have a problem with it if that's the way you want to live your life. Me personally, being um, divorced, I don't think I could live in a household with my ex-husband. But that's just me. So, <laughs> I like to see that shit. <laughs> Brought to you by WP. Yeah. <laughs> but what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that people who do do it, I do respect it, and I don't have an issue with it mm -hmm. because people live their lives how they live their lives. They make the decisions based on however they want to make their decisions. Well, if you look at the statistics, especially in the black community, and now it's crossing over to the other communities as well. But it, the majority of black men are living in households with children that aren't theirs. That's true. And they're raising other people's children That's true. as another man raises theirs. That is true. So that you have true. these blended families and these blended households that will forever continue to happen for whatever reason. And as I said off air, there's a television show that's on that spots like this, mm -hmm. where the kids stay in the house and the parents alternate. Okay. You know, one lives in the garage and then in the house, but the children still go get the same school, school district, right. and they still get to be around their same, you know, right. their, their comfort zone with their friends. You pointed out, how does that look to the children? What does that give them as an idea of a loving relationship when they also see mommy and daddy going on dates and bringing their dates home for date nights sometime? Now, I would pay devil, devil's advocate here, because for me, and this is just in my experience, as much as I'm very open and honest with my children. Mm -hmm. I do not sugarcoat anything for them. I let them know up front when me and their father separated. I let them know up front what was going on because when I decided to try to keep stuff from them, then they ended up coming to me. Mm -hmm. And I realized that, okay, children understand a lot more than what we yep. do. And social media them. put a lot out exactly. there. Exactly. So yeah. I think if you can sit down and have an open and honest relationship and communication with your children, I think they will understand, like, okay, you know, mommy and daddy can't work this out. They're not together or whatever. Mommy does date. Daddy does date. But as long as those parents love those children, right. I think, in all actuality, I think they'll be a lot better off than having two parents pretending to be together and pretending to be married and pretending to be, but and, but there's so much tension, then that's, 
Yeah, <laughs> then that's when it becomes an issue. Right. That's why I said if it works, it works. But if it's not gonna work for everybody, like I said, it definitely couldn't work for me. Right. But in some households, it can work. Right. Well, but what's to say that it's working for the kids though? It might, or the parents might think that it's working mm -hmm. because they've gotten into their routine, but mentally, how is it affecting the kids? That's exactly, what I, that's what I exactly. Do because exactly. That, that, that's setting up a stage of continuous broken home for their longevity because when they have kids and they run into an issue, then they're gonna say, oh, okay, well, yeah, we we'll just live together, but we won't be married, and we can do our own thing, we can do our and own it's thing. good. And then that generation keeps continuing. But I think we see that now. I think we see with the onset of social media. I think we see how people are interacting in relationships, and now it's not just kids; it's in the adults. I do when I do my show, I'm talking to women that are 40, 45, and 50 who now have to navigate the dating landscape again. Maybe they were married for years and they get divorced, which I really hate to see. That's me. I really hate to see. No, but you know what it's sad when I see these relationships of 10, 15, 20, 30 years just break down right. and they end up divorced, mm -hmm. you know, for whatever reason. And then they have to navigate this landscape and it's not pretty and it's not easy. It's and, they, and, and, and they don't know, you know, the things to say and, and, and how to react and the same thing, things to do. So then their children see this. Mm -hmm. So then they repeat it. Right. You know, the sons see the men being, you know, romancing, flipping women like hotcakes and whatnot. You know, Monday I got Jane, Tuesday I got this person, and it, this guy told me, and I know we, 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 we didn't get a chance to talk about it, but he said, women need to go ahead and realize now that you're going to be sharing a man. Whether you like it or not, go ahead and open yourselves up to it and realize it. You're going to be sharing a man. So now they see mommy. With daddy in the house, even though they're not with each other, mm -hmm. but then they see mommy go on a date, and they see daddy go on a date, then they come back, and then we spend Christmas together, and then we spend Thanksgiving together. So uh, mommy, and dad, mommy and daddy are laughing and joking and kicking it up and having drinks, and maybe they fall asleep on the couch together. Right. You know, so the children see different things. That's so their, their idea of love is completely different than what we see as a one man, one woman thing. Right. They see, you know. But it, I think that's all in what you allow your children to see. That's true. But they're going to see it because if you don't see affection, if you don't see daddy kissing mom, because that's where you see that love and affection. If you don't see daddy buying flowers and doing romantic things, men won't know how it is. And women won't know that they're accepting the bare minimum. Oh, you know, that fish was swimming. But well, you know fish what swimming. That's what they're supposed to do. How I'm being used to be married, you have some husbands that don't do that. But that's that's incumbent upon them to her to teach them that. Right. To do and the same thing you have to but teach. But that is true, but then it becomes where you've been married for so long and sometimes when you get to towards the end where y'all are just right then, then that's when like and I've seen it, it becomes in my own point. children. Yeah, like they were like and it, it took a lot of love and it took a lot of conversation and it even took some of them really sitting down yeah. yeah, talking to somebody. Yeah. Because all of that encumbers is it cumbersome of them really understanding what's mm -hmm. going on right. mm -hmm. and us just being real with them. I think we have just gotten away with really being honest with our kids. And lying to them. And right. lying to them. Right. Right. And see, because for me, okay. for me, see, April and I went through our divorces around the same time. Okay. I was texting her and she was texting me. <laughs> <laughs> and so, it, yeah. so I know about that. You, you're married for so long and then you want to set this environment for your kids. Right. But then when you have to make that final decision to say, hey, we got to call it quits. But at the same time, I'll, I'll say this. Even with my ex now, he still buys flowers. I, I was, and we had family then and he still wore the welcome mm -hmm. because we're still your parents. Yeah, right. Honor and respect us as such, and we're going to honor and respect you as the kids. But at the same time, no, daddy ain't going to be loving, I'm going to be hugging and kissing. Right. No, okay. you can take that stuff over wherever you like it at. The reason why we did what we did. But if you stop sugarcoating stuff for your kids, yes. then they'll understand the truth about things, and then they can face the reality of it. I think kids suffer more when you keep lying to them. Yeah. Yeah. You keep trying yeah. to pretend like everything yeah. is okay, okay, or that we're buddy. No, you're not my friend. Right. right. Now I will say, I will say it took it took <laughs> not, not, I, like I could make it because it took it took me a long it time. It took me a long time. It took me a long time. Now listen, now listen. Like I said, you know, me and my my me and my ex husband. I'm very open about this because you know, like any well, of my stuff is out there anyway. It, it was. <laughs> what I'm saying. What I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But um, <laughs> but. 
you know, I think we got to a place where we can coexist. We can have a conversation in regards to our children. I think that we came to we we came to a point where we're like, hey, listen, I'm over whatever it is that happened. Mm -hmm. I'm done with it. I'm done. I'm mm -hmm. fine. You know, I'm happy, and that no longer affects me. So we're at a point where we can coexist. We can have conversations. Um, you know, will we ever be friends? I don't know. I can't tell. But right now, we can coexist. We, you know. You know, like I said, it, it just it, it just all kind of works into how you plan on dealing with it. Right. And I even tell my kids, you know, listen, we're still your parents. We still love you. Mm -hmm. um, that's never going to change. Mm -hmm. um, even though things change with us, doesn't mean it's going to change right. with you. Mm -hmm. So that's like yesterday we we had this funny conversation. Mm -hmm. He says, "Well, meet me the pool hall. We're going to shoot pool. Okay, no problem with that." Double or nothing. What was double or nothing? You ain't seen that movie live in basketball? No, I'm not seeing it. But watch it. this. I'm a slow walk. You're going to take the day because you ain't coming. <laughs> so bring the kids. As the mama says, you never miss your water till you well done. Thank God. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> All right, guys. Oh, my goodness. So when we come back, we're going to wrap up the show with our final thought. And, um, so we got more women's talk live podcast. Don't go there. Ooh, come and on. welcome back to Women's Talk Live. This was a very, very interesting show. It was interesting. <laughs> Thank you to Thank our guests. Yes, yes. Yeah, this is good. Like I said, she's no stranger to the WPD family, so uh, welcome. Okay. And hopefully we can do more. Like I, I mean, I'm very, very interested. Maybe we can do a show. Just kind of talking a little bit more about sure. you know, the healing water and stuff. Because I don't about this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. But listen, don't forget that we have um, once a month we are going to be doing a Women's Talk Live show. It's going to be the last Sunday of every month this 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 month because we the sassy head, you know. Well, not just sassy. Plans next weekend. Okay, babe. Next weekend. <laughs> okay, babe. <laughs> next day. Well, hello. <laughs> Super producer has plans. Right, right. Okay. So, you know, but, right yeah. now, you're coming. I'm gonna see you, baby. All right. But um, <laughs> I want to well, talk to my baby. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. Next month, we're gonna have our show on March 24th. So um, make sure that you watch us on Facebook Live and on WPDMediaNetworks.com. Uh, we will be there. Uh, you can go. It's right on top of the page. You can go to either tab catch all of the shows that we have live on WPD Media Networks. So, and you can also, you know, check me out on Mondays. Yes. 12 p.m. on Birthday Radio, Situation with Sassy. And mm -hmm. I'm, going, I'm going into my, like, 10th season, so I need people that want to come on and talk about being holy and horny. Okay. <laughs> okay. And gay for the stag. And gay for the stag. And gay for the stag. So, if you know, Inbox me on um, Sassy Subscribe. You can DM me on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Snapchat, and Twitter. I do because you know you have a lot of people. I, I just made the owner. The owner just walked out. Like I don't, I don't want anything straight in me. Well, it's gonna be our last show at my Tigo Barn Girl. What I want to clarify is, you have a lot of people. Like I have a lot of women who are abstaining, uh -huh. and they say that they're doing it because they want to have a closer relationship with God, uh -huh. but. They still have that baser need, and they don't. They don't know how to really um, juxtapose that that mindset mm -hmm. with being. Don't have dildos. No, see, no. It's, it's, but it's not even. It's not even that. They they actually want somebody. Right. But it's the fact that they don't want it to be random. They don't want it to be you know a friends with benefit type of situation. Mm -hmm. But they still have these pleasures of the flesh. But fornication. It says it's a sin, so they, they're trying to work around all of this. So I really want to talk to women on how do you do this, or even if you've done it, mm -hmm. you know, how do you how do you justify it? Because that's not me. You know, it's, it's not me. But I see people. I see, you know, I've talked to women. Mm -hmm. I've gotten emails where they really want to figure out how to navigate that. And I mean, it's a, it's a real thing for people. And then the other thing is, is you know, the men. The super macho guys that go to jail and they're gay while they're in jail and then they come out and they're not gay anymore. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to them. And you're not going to be on Facebook Live. It's just, you're going to be on the radio. So mm -hmm. 
So you did the stash, your voice? I think I'm gonna have to come on slide through the deal on your show. Okay, good. <laughs> good. We're gonna set that up. We're gonna set that up. Because I because when you see the pastor, you could exactly you could really speak to that and talk to the women about that. We're gonna talk about so that. It's every Monday at 12 p.m., but it's a different segment each Monday. Okay. So the next one starts on the 25th, and I'm going to be, um, I interviewed Susan. Susan, so Susan Smallwood, yeah. whose grandiosity is from yes. um, Abuse to Abundance. Oh, oh she, has, so she has an amazing She has a toxic story. relationship. She's going to talk about that. And, okay. yeah, so that's going to be February 25th at 12. And then the next episode, I already got it queued up. I already got it queued up. Horny and Holy is episode two. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. And I got my guest parents, Jack. There you go. So, there you go. We're gonna talk about it. See? We're gonna talk about it. So oh, it's gonna be good. <laughs> Hey, All right, y'all. Close well, my house, don't get fed. Exactly, I had to say something. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, like I said, we are still searching for our uh, co-hosts. And as um, soon as we do that, then we are actually in the <laughs> <laughs> Send us your tapes and we can, you know, we can fetch you. Alright, All right, y'all, so here's for our final thought. Being genetically related doesn't make you family. Love, support, trust, sacrifice, honesty, protection, acceptance, security, compromise, gratitude, respect, and loyalty is what makes you family. So I this is Women's Talk Loud, April J. I'm Sassy Sprug. And our special guest, Harris J. <laughs> we'll see y'all next month. Are we out? Cue music. <laughs> <laughs>